Hi guys, this is a video uh, showing you my uh, proximity sensors that I have online. They sense uh, up to about 40 centimeters if uh, configured correctly, and they give a 5 volt output that's compatible with TTL and CMOS. As you can see on there, there's actually a few chips on there. There's actually a relay. We're not actually using any of them except for the uh, sensor, which is in the front, and the uh, flip-flop that's behind that relay there in the LED that's sitting uh, on top of the uh, flip-flop. So we've discounted everything else on there. Uh, the other things, the other chips on there is there's a power on, re uh, power on reset circuit and a 5-volt uh, relay, but we're not using those right now. So uh, let me just give you a... Let me just show you. You can use a battery to power this easily. It doesn't take up a whole lot of current. I've just got it hooked up to my uh, power supply. I'm about two or three feet back. Here's my hand. I have it on toggle. The flip-flop is in toggle mode. So if I just keep... Um, I sell these sensors individually. Or I sell them uh, with the flip-flop and the LED and everything everything you need to make a toggle. Now this can be interfaced with uh, with just about anything. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with this, especially considering that it's in toggle mode. It's, you can use it as an on-off switch for a whole other circuit. Now if you see those extra wires that are lying around, those are actually test circuits I was playing around with my oscilloscope, so don't worry about those. The circuit that's actually working right now is extremely easy to configure. Uh, now you might have a little bit of pro you might have some problem putting this onto a breadboard. I'll show you why. You might see on the left and right side of the sensor uh, there is a little lead on the top. That in there's two leads, one on the right and one on the left. And those actually have to be soldered and connected soldered together and connected to ground. Uh, so you can do that and then you can fit it into the breadboard as long as you bend the pins on the inner underside. So now as a second configuration, if you just wanted to see how the sensor is working. Uh, as long as you, it's uh, the output is nor is uh, normally high. As soon as you break the field, and you hold your hand there, or whatever is blocking it, you can hold your hand there if you hold it in place, and it'll stay off. So what this does is this sends an infrared beam, and it receives a signal that's bounced off, uh, bounced off by the, uh, or reflected rather by the object that's, um, that's getting in the way of the beam. So. As you can see, I'm pretty far back here. Let's just see. Right now, I've got to configure to its highest capacity. So you can't even see my hand. If I keep my hand very still, it'll stay off. Its field of vision is about uh, has, is very small. It's very straightforward. Um, it's not like a PIR sensor that can uh, that has a, a very high field of view. Uh, this is a very uh, direct, straightforward. Uh, field of view. So if I don't keep my hand very steady, uh, then the beam is not, won't be hitting my hand and won't reflect. All you need to make the sensor work at full capacity is one, one capacitor and one resistor that I also supply. So um, if you're interested, come by my eBay store, www.electroniclessons.com. Got all sorts of crazy uh, hobbyist electronics, great stuff. Uh, stop by. Uh, I got tons of video lessons, uh, written lessons, labs. They're extremely cheap. You get two for one. So uh, help a starving student out and come buy some of my crap. Thanks, guys.